7,000 people killed in Iraq so far this year. The death toll keeps rising. Children, women, men, mainly Shiite. The targets of what the Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki calls terrorists, bent on starting a civil war. Maliki is now in Washington, asking Congress and the White House for help. F-16 fighter jets, Apache attack helicopters, and the U.S.'s blessing to go after what he calls foreign fighters coming in from Syria. Al-Qaeda is engaged in a renewed, concerted campaign to foment sectarian violence and drive a wedge between our people. We will not let that happen again. But even before Maliki arrived in Washington, a group of U.S. senators was urging President Barack Obama to think twice. In a letter to the White House, the senators accused Maliki of creating the conditions that have made the attacks possible. If Prime Minister Maliki continues to marginalize the Kurds, alienate many Shia, and treat large numbers of Sunnis as terrorists, no amount of security assistance will be able to bring stability and security to Iraq. And they made sure the Prime Minister got the message when he visited Capitol Hill. He's creating conditions for a civil war. I met with Prime Minister Maliki just a short time ago. Um, frankly, he was not very happy about that letter. I spoke very frankly with him that uh, if he expects this kind of assistance that he's asking for, that we need a strategy and we need to know exactly how that's going to be employed and we need to see some changes in, in Iraq. Political analysts say the White House can achieve two goals in Iraq, stability and political inclusiveness, if it's willing to play tough. Slow rolling delivery of weapons, uh, uh, threatening to withhold Apache helicopters, that is leverage. There's no way of telling whether the Obama administration will go that far, or whether doing so will be enough to save lives or stop the spiral that worries U.S. politicians. Rosalind Jordan, Al Jazeera, Washington.